And to our friends who are um, staying on for Minion, we'll, we'll come back to the concluding prayers in a moment, um, or in, in 15 moments, I suppose, 20 minutes, something like that. Um, and thinking about what to do this morning, um, I decided that not everybody in this circle was able to learn with Rabbi Hammer this past Shabbat. And that even those who were there, um, we didn't get to really, I, I felt like she went through some of the texts kind of quick and that there was what to linger on and what to linger on in this group. Um, so raise your hand if you were with us for lunch and Rabbi Hammer's teaching at lunchtime about Hanukkah this past Shabbat. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, hands down. Raise your hands if you were with us for the dream, Rabbi Hammer's teaching earlier in the morning for about dreaming and dreams. One, two, three. I can't tell if Debbie, Debbie was there. Debbie was helping pass out sheets. Three. All right, so maybe we'll go that route. I was deciding which which one to do. Um, but maybe we'll play in the, the dream work one. Good morning, girls. Um, so let me give me a moment to share the screen. What I think was so, um, well, here, you know what? I'm going to share the screen in two different ways. Uh, we're going to start this way. I'm going to start by going over to, oh, yeah, yeah, hold on. Got to find, oh, that's not where we're going to. Stop, share. We are going to go, here it is. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties sharing the thing I want to share. Um, what I want to share is her source sheet, but also her magazine that she's created. She's created a magazine that um, is about dream dreams and dream work, which we didn't look at together. Um, and so I'm sorry for the technical difficulty. I don't know why it won't call be called up. Let me try it one more time this way. Okay. This should work. And I'm sharing this because it's also available online. Um, I can send the link around if you're interested. You know, come come find me and I'll send you the link. Um, it's um, online with Iron Press, actually. Um, and so Hanukkah Chalon, Dedication of Dreams, Five Dream Meditations for Kislev. We will not, um, we, we won't meditate together, I promise. But it was interesting to see what she did, the way she is interested in weaving together the fact that we read these parshayot, which are so fully laden with dreams, um, coming from Yaakov's dream a, a week or two ago of the ladder stretching up into the heavens, and then all the way through to Joseph's dreams, and connecting it with Hanukkah. Um, so here's something that those of us who were together didn't get to look at together. Um, which is the idea that, um, sorry, I can't see it because of the, I'm waiting for the little thing at the top of my screen to go away. Go away, little top of the thing it's here. All right, I can't read the top. I'll read this instead. Dreams speak to us in mysterious voices and tell us truths we did not expect. And dreams can send us on life-changing journeys. And she invites us to say a blessing before going to sleep, to set an intention, not only for good dreams, but to help us use our dreams to learn something about our lives. So here, this is what the Me'ashi Loach has to say about Yaakov and his dream, which we didn't play with um, together this past week. When on his journey, um, on his, he dreamt on his way, when Yaakov Avinu dreamed his dream on his way to his uncle Lavan, he investigated it and taught all the depth within it to the tribes. And they studied it and found many new and revelatory insights in it. For so many deep Torah insights are found in that one dream. And every year during the Hanukkah season, Jews read the story of the dream Jacob dreams and the dream of a ladder between earth and sky. According to one Hasidic thinker, this dream became the Torah of Jacob and his children. They studied it together to find more insights and more revelation. And so what she's inviting us to do is to start dream journaling. And I had to leave at the beginning of the session. So maybe she got into this a little bit with, um, with, with everybody. Did she get into dream journaling with us at the end of the session? Yes. No, I'm having trouble seeing everybody. No. All right. So she invites us to, to think about this as a time of dream journaling and she'll connect, we'll, we'll connect it to Hanukkah and lighting candles in a moment. So now I'm going to go back into the source sheet, assuming that my, um, 
my, all of my technical things. I don't know why the screen sharing is not working. And I really apologize for how choppy this is. It's very annoying to listen to me try and pull stuff up. Um, let me try one more time. All right, let's see. There we go. All right, Joseph and the practice of Jewish dream work. So for our friends who are here, this is what we, the handout we used Shabbat morning. For our friends who are not here, this is the handout we used on Shabbat morning. Um, and it begins with, um, it begins with the Harsha that we were studying. But the, where I want to start, where I thought was really interesting was the Talmud right? That there were 24 dream interpreters in Jerusalem. Once I dreamed a dream and went to all of them and each gave me a different interpretation and each one came. Rabbi Barakia said, this is a different part of the Talmud, even though a part of a dream is filled, all of it is not fulfilled. From where do we derive this? From the story of Joseph's dream, as it is written. And he said, behold, I've dreamed yet a dream and behold, the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowed down to me. And at that time, his mother was no longer alive. So what this is showing is that there's clearly in the rabbinic period, a respect and an interest for dreams, right? There are dream interpreters and the rabbis themselves are going to hear their dreams interpreted and they understand that different people are going to interpret them in different ways. So you can go to all 24 and get a different read on what it means, but they're going all 24. Like it mattered them to them to go to all 24 and to bother to take their dream seriously. And then part two is, wait a minute, do our dreams, are they literally true? What's going on? Like, who is the sun and the moon and the stars? Well, if the stars are the brothers and the sun and the moon, it must be his father and his mother, but his mother's not alive. So even our dreams are kind of tricky and maybe we take them literally and maybe we don't. And, and what's going on? Maybe I'll pause there for a moment. I'm going to pause there. Are there... Um, thoughts or questions, and also this is a broader place to talk about what we learned together on Shabbat morning for those who were there. Do we take dreams seriously in this circle? Like, how do what's our um, what what do we make of going to a dream interpreter? Like, how many of us are going to dream interpreters? You know, I rarely remember my dreams. Right. So if you don't even remember them, then not so helpful, right? Yeah, Leslie. So my grandmother kept a book by the side of her bed. She was Hungarian and very kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I wouldn't say gypsy-like, but she she had a strong belief that your dreams had meanings and she would wake up and read through these things. And, and I, um, I, I think for me, maybe dreams are wish fulfilling because some of my most vivid dreams are of her since she has passed away. Like if she comes, if I see her in a dream, like I wake up and go, okay, so she is trying to tell me something. But by and large, I, I think it's interesting. The thing about dreams is having a religious context. I've never felt that. Hmm. Um, well, and, and Rabbi Hammer reminded us of the, the scene in Fiddler on the Roof, right? Where, you know, like the big dream scene, you know? And um so that's reminding me of your grandmother, right? There's clearly something in at least Ashkenaz, you know, kind of superstition, folk religion. But but here's where they're getting it from, right? Like, it's not like the culture around it was like their version of New Age religion. Like, it's actually deeply embedded all the way going back to the rabbinic period and actually all the way going back to the Torah, right? Because our, our forefathers are having dreams. And this whole story hinges on Joseph and the interpretation of his dreams, the way he's interpreting his dreams and his brothers are interpreting the dreams, but also then when he's in prison. In, right, the cupbearer and the you know, like the 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 baker and the cupbearer and their dreams and his ability to interpret their dreams and then his ability to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. So the whole story actually hinges on the ability to make sense of a dream. Anyone else want to jump in? If you have so many different dream interpreters, you don't know which one are you supposed to believe. So what you do is you believe the one that you choose. Hmm. So it's really your interpretation of of what you want rather than what may be or not be That's does anyone who was there remember well, okay does anyone i see erica you're up next does anyone there remember what we learned from shabbat morning about who should interpret the dream all right i'll, I'll put it back up erica while i'm finding it you um well you know it, it's so interesting that you talk about like you should interpret your dream is is that when 
I think we have different kinds of dreams. You know, it's like he, I, he rarely remembers them. Sometimes I remember better than others. You know, it, it depends. And sometimes a dream will wake you up and you're like, oh, I'm really processing something. And, 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 and this is something that pertains to my life. I think that, you know, I think sometimes someone like when I start dreaming about my dad, I'm like, oh, oh, what's going on with that? Why am I dreaming about this? Or you dream a certain anxiety sort of situation. You're like, oh yeah, I've been really worrying about something. This is my way of processing it in the night. You know, I think we get different kinds of dreams. And I think that if you look at like in literature and, and traditions, there are different kinds of dreams. There's like ordinary dreams and there's prophetic dreams. There's, you know, processing dreams and, you know, just wishful dreams, you know, all kinds. Yes. And um, so I'm not seeing it in the source sheet. Maybe she just said it and it wasn't in the sources, but she she quoted um, a source which which recommends that we only approach somebody to interpret our dream if they like you. <laughs> right. Wasn't that it? That you can only if you're going to go like be, can't, be be sure that there's somebody who likes and loves you. Right. Because the, the interpretation matters. Right. Every like you don't want to get like, you know, what movie is it where everything that happens? They're like, that's a sign you're going to die. You know, like well, I don't remember the movie right now. But right, you don't want somebody who's going to like fill you with fear. You want someone who's going to fill you with love and fun. And if you have the choice of 24, like go and choose well, which I think is actually like beautiful advice for life. So I want to pick up where Erica um, is bringing us to share the Zohar that we learned together and get back into some of these texts. Um, and so the Zohar, here we are. When a person lies in bed, the soul goes out and wanders the world above and enters the place that the soul enters, enters wherever it's going to enter. And then later at a different passage, the Zohar says, when people lie asleep in bed and the soul leaves them as it is written, in slumber upon the bed, God then uncovers human ears. Then the blessed Holy One informs the soul through the rung presiding over dreams of things destined to befall the world or of things corresponding to the mind's imaginings so that one will follow a path of admonishment in the world for one is not informed while in a state of bodily vigor, as we have said. Rather, an angel informs the soul and the soul informs the person. And that dream derives from above where souls leave the body and ascend each in their own way. And finally, there's nothing that comes into the world that has not been announced in a dream. So what is this saying? Well, the, what, what, what do we make of these three texts? I'm going to read this one again because there's a lot in it, right? When people lie asleep in the bed and the soul leaves them, then the blessed Holy One informs the soul through the wrong of like that, that latter image of things destined that one will follow a path of it. Not for one is not informed while we're awake, essentially. Rather, an angel informs the soul, like while we're asleep, the soul informs the person. The dream derives above where souls leave the body and ascend each in their own way. What do we make of this? Yeah, Jerry, go ahead. You're on mute, though. Well, you know, that last sentence is uh, very, very powerful. The um, things that are, that are going to happen to you come to you in dreams. Um, I try to remember my dreams. Often I don't. Um, but they, they have always been a, um, a forecast. Okay, of, of what is going to come in reality. I particularly remember those kinds of having dreams in business where something terrible was going to happen. Okay, and sometimes I was able to prevent it. Hmm. Right. And so whether that's the psyche subconscious stuff coming out in a dream or whether we say that's directly from heaven, right? Like you can read it either way, but either way, it's some kind of message to self. Curtis, did you want to say something? Yes, I had. I remember when my mom passed away, especially the first year, I had a lot of dreams where she was talking to me and it was so real. It's as if she was still around, you know, and then, of course, over the years, that kind of dissipated. But I remember... You know, in certain dreams, I get over and over again, like academic dreams and things like that. 
and um, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very, it's very, it's very interesting, especially when the dream happens over and over again. And it's especially pleasant when you can almost like control the dream. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a dream of flying, like a bird. Isn't that weird? But I uh, love that dream. Uh, yes, it's beautiful. It's and and what you're talking about is like lucid dreaming. And there are people who practice that, like they really work on the ability to control their dreams or to have some kind of, you know, between the worldness of it, between the states of consciousness state of it. I don't know how that helps Ed, who doesn't remember his dreams at all. Um, Alan. Uh, what she pointed out, which um, really hit me, is our dreams are such good interpretation of what we believe is going on and i believe you know i also think there's divine uh, energy around it but when we dream we don't have all of our normal limitations you know to be appropriate you know <laughs> to uh you know how you talk to people what things you say things you can say in your dreams you could do all of it and that's what makes my thinking about what the dream was so valuable. I love that, right? And whether that's subconscious or whether that's an invitation of some kind. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Anyone else want to jump in? So the last thing I'll share then um, to wrap up, um, except for to say as an aside to Alan, Alan, you're not on Facebook, are you? No, it's fine. I don't see you on Facebook, but the point is that Martin Attickman was like, wait, you and Mark Nelson both at the same men's club? He commented on my post last night of the men's club picture. That's all. We can move on. So I want to share this other. Um... Oh, she's sharing his pause. This is so frustrating. What I'm trying to share is her um, this this magazine, this online magazine that she created because i can wrap us up mm -mm -mm. why is this not here if i close this and i close this this is so frustrating i'm sorry try one more time um she invites us to connect our dream work and our candle lighting here we go so in this beautiful magazine such as it is, zine, as they're calling it, right? Um, she invites us to, to dream journal during Hanukkah and during these weeks of the Parsha Yot where we're reading about so many dreams. We have, you know, we're in Mikates this week, so we have like two more weeks of Joseph in the dreams, right? So she invites you to, 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 also, to keep that journal, like Leslie's grandmother, right? To keep a journal by our bed. And the trick is that the minute you wake up in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning, before you do anything, it's actually freshest still. And, and Ed, the other thing she says is if you don't remember your dream, just wake up, write down what you wake up thinking about. Right. And, and because that's probably a taste of what was going on in your psyche or, you know, what, whatever was happening in your inner world while you're asleep in your subconscious. Um, that's interesting. Maybe. Yeah, that's possible. Right. Like it's led you. Something's going on there, but you don't know what. So just write down wherever you're whatever your you know, your feelings, your, your thoughts first thing in the morning. And then she invites us to do a minorat chalam. Ooh, girls. <laughs> Are you hearing the, the fire alarm going off in my apartment, everybody? <laughs> my girls are making pancakes. All right. Throughout the eight days of Hanukkah, you can use the lighting of the menorah as a moment to honor your deepest and most meaningful dream encounters. As you light the first candle, offer up a prayer or intention for dreams to come to you during Hanukkah. Then recall an image from a past basking in the glow of the candle. Uh, pa sorry, from a vast dream. Meditate on that image for a few minutes while gazing at and basking in the glow of the candle. Before getting up from this meditation or this encounter with the light, see if there is a word or phrase the image suggests, one that you might take into the next day with you. And she invites us to do that with each of the eight nights. And, um, and then on that eighth night, <coughs> to gaze at your fully lit, Hanukkiah, your fully lit menorah, to collect them all as a kind of um, collection of 
of dreams and the sense of dream being asleep, but also dreams of self. Like what are you dreaming about for yourself and what has come to you as you light each candle? So I wanted to send that off to us. I know that many of us um, in this circle are lighting candles alone at home. And um, I know some of us are using Zoom and on some nights we're able to get together with other friends or family. But I thought that was a beautiful um, havanan, beautiful ritual way to light candles and feel not only a little less alone, but feel like it's meaningful spiritually to stand there. And before you even say the blessing in light, to call up a dream and then to use the light of the candle to gaze and to think about what that dream is telling you or what it might mean and to collect those as a way of pushing us forward from darkness into light in the coming weeks. So thank you all for learning with me. And a hag orim v'sameach. Um, to those friends who I won't see, we're going to finish up Minion now. So we have another you know, couple of minutes. Um, you have to see what's going on in my house. <laughs> 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 there's the fire alarms going off there's smoke emanating from the <laughs> Pavel saying hello the girls are dancing to try to get the fire alarm to like not go off while I'm teaching it's chaos next to me <laughs> but it's fun chaos and good chaos um so anyway I go on vacation starting tomorrow so I will see everybody in the new year if I don't um see you during my day today at Oheb Shalom um, and everybody have a Chag Sameach. And meanwhile, and a happy 2023. And now we're continuing with Ashrei on page 78. Ashrei Yashvei Vetecha, Od Yaluch HaSela. Meta <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we'll conclude with mourners Kaddish and anyone who's reciting Kaddish just make sure you're not on mute right now so Jerry and Ernie if you want to take yourselves off mute so we can hear one another and we'll conclude remembering our loved ones Jerry, you're, you're, you're getting there? Yitkadal, Yitkadash, Shemei Rabbah. Amen. 
Ama divra kirute viam lech machute, Vachayachon of Yomachon, Vachaye the whole Beit Israel, Vagala of his man Kari Vimru. Amen. 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 Have a beautiful, blessed Hanukkah day filled with light and love, everybody. Enjoy your family and your holiday. Thank you. Enjoy your son's visit. Enjoy your family. The pancakes taste good. <laughs> Can't wait to see what that pan looks like. <laughs> Bye, everybody.